Welcome to R&R. So glad to be in the house. Thank you, John and Lauren, for the powerful praise and worship. Whew. Do that for hours on hours. A special warm welcome to you. If you're new here this morning, feel free afterwards. Please stick around, ask questions. Let's conversate, get to know one another. Uh, just a reminder, tomorrow night, uh, Discipleship Group, 34 Laurel Hill Drive. If you're interested in coming out, please let us know. We'd love to see you there. And uh, in light of the topic on prayer, uh, Jimmy Dean had to run to the hospital his uh, I think his mother-in-law had to have an emergency surgery, some kind of infection, and it was, I guess, Virtua couldn't handle it. It's dealing with the eyes of some sort, so there, she's at Jefferson Hospital. So uh, keep Jimmy Dean and Diane in your prayers uh, for that. And there's all kinds of bugs going around, so uh, I pray everyone can stay healthy and... Uh, Keep praying that whatever is in my abdomen or intestines finally decides to go away. Twelve days I have really not slept. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, We are going to be in Ephesians chapter 6 finishing up the series that we have done on spiritual warfare. Next week we are going to start the book of Philippians together. Uh, So you can be reading ahead It's a fairly easy read. Um, That's where we're going to move into next. If you're new and you or you've only jumped in with this spiritual warfare series uh, in recent weeks, you do know that we have a website that you can go to. uh, So please feel free to check it out and listen to the previous messages to kind of get caught up and just to go through again. Listen, I'm only teaching the spiritual warfare from a kind of a specific angle. It, uh, there's so much more to get. There's so much more you can apply. So please uh, continue to read and study on your own. For those of you who have and are into social media, we do a Facebook Live devotion every morning at 8 a.m. So if you're up in the morning and want to jump on with us and get the words stuffed in you, please feel free to tune in it's, and sh- share the wealth and sh- share the news with the world. I know a lot of people use Facebook, so it's something we do Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. And uh, I pray that you would tune in and join us for some devotions if that's something you choose to listen to. Let us pray. Oh, last reminder. Uh, our trip to Liberia is definitely sounding like it's, it's on. You know, uh, Ron and I will be headed there in March 15th through the 25th is the details of the trip. We are going to teach about 150 pastors how to make disciples. Uh, March 15th through the 25th. So um, please... Pray for the trip. Maybe what's in my stomach is preparation for Liberia. I don't know. (laughs) He goes, do you like spicy food? I'm like, no. But my boy Ron, man, pump it full of hot stuff that you can because he lives for that. So, uh, but it should be a sweet time. And uh, yeah, that's where we're going to head. Let's pray. And we will begin our study together. Father, thank you for the morning. Thank you that right now it's warm, Lord. We know that you're sending in a little bit of a cold front for 24 hours. But God, we just give you thanks for this day. Thank you for the power, the joy of praise and worship. Thank you, Lord, that it can just clear our minds and our hearts. Just thank you for you. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for being faithful and true. 
Thank you for being just so merciful and gracious and good to your kids. Thank you that we have eternal life. Father, my heart goes out if anyone doesn't know you personally, intimately, that today would be the day, Lord, that they would open their heart to you. They'd be introduced to your love. And for those of us that do, Lord, let just today's message be that reminder of you are the source of our strength, Lord, and all power comes from you. And we need you every hour, every day. Visit us today, God, as we open your word. Come inside and teach us, show us, convict us, bless us, empower us, embolden us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The title to the morning's message is the source of our strength. And it's dealing with the last section called prayer. In Ephesians chapter 6, let's just read it through one last time, shall we? Starting in verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on your breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and for me, Paul would add, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Paul finishes the series on warfare and the armor of God with prayer, and rightfully so. It is the source of our strength. And we're going to deal with it again in terms of warfare. The war that we are in. The second you say and you mean it. Okay, Jesus Christ, I'm yours. I'm ready to do what you want me to do. Here I am. I'm ready. Welcome to the battleground, right? It's not a playground. It's a battleground. We're going to look at five different aspects of prayer today. And again, in the context, I want you to see that Paul says, man, pray for me. Isn't that how he finishes? I'm an ambassador in chains. And I need boldness. This is the Apostle Paul, the great missionary. This is the Apostle Paul who was caught up to the third heavens. This is the Apostle Paul who had an encounter on the Damascus Road, right? You guys remember Acts 9? His conversion is unlike most. Gets flattened to the ground. He has a straight up encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. This man would go on to and plant several churches, several missionary trips. You would think that this man huh, wouldn't even need any prayer. Look at what he's done. 
Look at how bold he's already been. But he is our loving reminder that we all are in desperate need to be prayed for and to be praying. He wants to finish well. He wants to make sure that when he stands before more kings and more people that he's not going to back down and he's not going to cower. So he says, pray for me that I would have the boldness to speak these things. And I just love how that starts. But in verse 18, which is where we're going to camp today, he says, praying always, praying always. It's the first As you'll see the outline up here, the first one I have for you is to pray regularly. I'm going to give you some cross-references that go with it. Pray regularly. As as disciples of Christ, we need to pray regularly. In 1 Thessalonians 5.17, it says that to pray without ceasing. (laughs) Literally, pray like you breathe. Everyone in here breathing? Uh Uh-huh, good. That means you can be praying. Now, we know that that's obviously an impossibility. You, You can't pray every minute of every hour of every day. The idea is that you are in constant communion with Jesus. You're in constant dialogue with Jesus. That as you move throughout your day, yes, you may have your set times to pray, and those times are important and necessary, but not limited to that. So when you get up in the morning, yeah, talking to the Lord. Hey, this is going to be a blessed day. Hey, Lord, what do you have in store for me today? Hey, Lord, how are you going to use me today? Hey, Lord, How's my family of R&R doing today? Hey, who can I, which one should I pray for? I know I'll pray for all of them. It's that kind of constant communion. If you're married, you know. Don't you talk to your spouse on a semi-frequent basis? Even if it's through text message. You send messages, right? You're, hey, hon. Can you pick up milk on the way home from, the, uh, from, from wherever you are? Hey, what are you cooking for dinner? I, I never get asked that question, just so you know. <laughs> what is it? Someone said, if you do something really bad, they'll never ask you to do it again. I can make eggs. But if you need something to be reminded of, think about the series which we just went through. Okay? Pray always. How about as you're moving through your day, you pray over your armor. Right? Think about this. Because we covered it all in the last several weeks. As you're moving through the day, think of and pray on your belt of truth. Am I practicing Truth today, according to the word. Am I living according to the truth that the Bible says? The breastplate of righteousness. Hey, maybe you're praying about your heart. Where is it? Is it hardened? Is it bitter? Is it angry? Is it sick? Is it hurt? Does it need healing? Does it need help? These are just things that you can pray to the Lord. Hey, my heart is heavy today. Hey, my heart is happy today. Because isn't that what it guards? The heart? How about the feet prepared to share the gospel? Hey, Lord, I'm walking into Walmart in five minutes. Give me an opportunity to witness. Hey, I'm going to my favorite co-worker. I can't stand Jesus. (laughs) I'm just going to give him a big, friendly shake and big hug or whatever and say, good morning to you. What's wrong with you? Nothing. I just love Jesus.
Remember when we did the feet series? Hey, look at your shoes. Maybe you talk to the Lord. Hey, time to go buy a new pair of shoes today. One that will prepare me for the battle. The shield of faith. Hey, Lord. Am I holding that my shield up and quenching all the arrows that are being fired at me right now? Those fiery darts. Maybe you've been hit by one of the darts. Lord, ow, I'm in pain today. Hey, I need to lock shields with a brother or a sister. Hey, I need to call them then and find out how they're doing. Whatever they're struggling with. Whatever trial they're going through. Right? These are just things you can be talking to the Lord about. The sword of the Spirit. The Word of God. Hey, are you praying to the Lord and thinking about what your morning devotion was about? And meditating on that throughout the day. Maybe you're thinking of the study to come that you're preparing for on Monday. Maybe you're thinking about last week's message. Something you heard this week. I don't know. But are you constantly thinking about God's word as you move throughout the day? Hey, maybe it's I can share a word with my sister or my brother in Christ. The helmet of salvation. My mind. How's your brain? Are you training your brain? Am I thinking good thoughts, joy, love, peace? And as you move throughout your day, listen, we all know it only takes a matter of minutes for something to hit us, something to happen to us, where all of a sudden our thoughts go from hero to zero. You get bad news. A tragedy happens. Whatever the case may be. Taking every thought captive. These are all things that will keep you praying regularly. Would you agree, family? It'll keep you praying without ceasing because you're going to want to be thinking about, is my armor on? And is my armor effectively working? Am I standing the ground? Because that's what this whole thing is about. If you have found yourself in recent weeks slipping and falling. The prayer is what's going to keep you strong. The prayer is what's going to keep you standing. Because it's not in your gift, in your talent. It's not in your strength or my strength. I don't care if you're the spiritual Hercules or Hulk. It won't matter unless you pray and I pray. And I know that that's very, very basic for some of us. But practically speaking, it's not something that maybe we always do. But if you do it regularly, you will find so much strength. You will find it, I guarantee you that number two we ought to pray variously variously paul says in verse 18 of ephesians 6 praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Bible, it talks about different kinds of prayer, different ways and modes in which you can pray. And I want everyone to hopefully get out if you're in or not go into this one track mind that when I pray, it's just my, my request list. Because I think that's probably true for me, sadly. I'm a big guy, unfortunately, who always goes to God and just says, here's what I need, Lord. Come on. I need this. I need this. I want that. Right? And that typically can sometimes just dominate my prayer life. It's just that one focus. But there's, oh, 
so much more power and strength to be had if we would take time to pray in various ways. Like, for example, thanksgiving. Have you ever stopped and just had a thank you session with Jesus? Thank you, Lord, for living in the most wonderful country. Thank you, Lord, for my wonderful family. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful church and all the wonderful people that come and all the gifts and the talents that are in this body. Thank you, Lord, that I have a full belly, a car that usually runs, teeth that usually work, <laughs> intestines that normally don't cause so much pain, Family, are we thankful? And do we pray that? Just take time to say, thank you, God. That's just one way. There's intercession. And we'll get into that way more when we get down to um, our last point that's in our study. But I want to point it to you now. Hey, I get to pray for you. What an honor. What a joy it is. Because when God answers that prayer and you say, hey, Jim, let me tell you what just happened today. I'm going to do spiritual backflips. Because I get fired up every time God listens to all of our prayers. Praying for one another. And sometimes I think we get streaky about that. Like we'll do it for a little bit and then just fall off and then come back and fall off and, you know. But that's another way. But the, one of the ways that I really want us to focus on in today's study, listen carefully, is praise and worship. <laughs> I knew that you would be the first to say that. I will try not to get emotional, but I know it's probably going to fail. <laughs> because we have and have been blessed by the Lord with two people who know how to worship. You experienced it this morning. But if I may, two Mondays ago, they finished a song in our Monday night Bible study group. It was, what's it, breath in my lungs? Right? Linda, tell John and Lauren what you experienced in that worship session. Briefly. Karen. Share your what you experienced. your pastor would say and I don't swear <laughs> we were we were in a different place bro heaven came down I 
I know the war is hard. And you have others that back you up. We have the wonderful Taylors in the back, the Delgados who couldn't be here today, Emily and all those, CJ. But God, the gift of praise and worship, you really have it. Now, I know it's an anomaly, and I'm not doing this to puff up their heads or anything, but praise and worship, come on, family. Do we praise, take time to praise and worship, right? Because in the Bible, you will find, for example, in Acts chapter 16, when Paul and Silas are thrown in prison, what do they do? They praise and worship. And what happens? It blows the door off the jail, right? There is power with praise and worship. So when you feel like, and emotionally, and maybe even spiritually, when you're just down and out, and the enemy is fiercely attacking, man, it's time to praise and worship. It's time to blow the trumpet sound. What do I mean by that? I would like you to please turn with me to Joshua chapter 6. Because I believe there is a critical lesson that's tied into this in Joshua chapter 6. And I know that the direct reference in Joshua chapter 6, they're not praising and worshiping, but we're going here for a reason. Joshua chapter 6. It's the destruction of Jericho. And I'm going to just pick it up in verse 1. I just want to read through the first five verses. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city all you men of war, and you shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout. And then the wall of the city will fall down flat. And the people shall go up every man straight before him. What's interesting is the fear of the Lord has made its way known to the people of Jericho, the Canaanite city. And this is a land that God promised to give to his kids. It's a fortified city. And they don't take it. This victory, this fight, this battle is all the Lord's. And what you'll find, and I found really, really fascinating about this. So just bear with me as I just give you a little bit of information that will help bring some of this text to light. But listen carefully and it's just so interesting. The Jews used two different kinds of trumpets. Those made of silver and those made of ram's horns. The silver trumpets were used especially by the priests to signal to the camp when something important was happening. But the ram's horns, which are the ones that they're using here, the ram's horns were primarily used for celebrations. The common Hebrew word for trumpet is shofar. Shofar, I may not be pronouncing it right. And the ram's horn, the Hebrew word for that, yovel, which happens to be the common root word for jubilee. 
which is an interesting term which you find in Leviticus chapter 25 when you read about the rules and the laws of Leviticus and the year of Jubilee, but it's the same exact words. And I'm just going to read you this quick verse from Leviticus 25.10. And you shall consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land. Listen to that. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you. In Leviticus, they hadn't received the land. In Jericho here, they're taking the land. So they show up. They do what God says. They blow these ram's horns. Because they're announcing to everyone, God has given us the victory. This land is ours. That's why we're here. Does that make sense? Do you follow that so far? You see, family, praise and worship will tear down your Jericho walls. So when you are really, really under attack and going through fierce trials and tribulations, man, blow that horn. Sing out your favorite praise and worship song. Cry out, sing out, shout out like the people did. And do it together. Because the people walk together. And can you imagine walking in that group? They couldn't say a word until they were given permission to. So there probably was a lot of quiet internal prayer going on. Um, okay, those are some big walls and we're just walking. Okay, this makes sense. I don't even believe the walls are coming down, but I'll still walk because my people are walking. And then you hear the... pastor once said that we should walk as victors, not victims. Do you have Jericho-sized walls of fear, of doubt, of depression, anxiety, anger, lust, hatred? Those walls have to come down. And you know what's going to bring them down? Prayer will. Praise and worship. I'm humbled and honored that our worship leaders did come from Michigan because they saw and there was a need. And I encourage you and exhort you, come be part of the worship experience here. Everyone has a preference. I can understand that. Some prefer hymns. Some prefer maybe a gospel type. Some prefer this or that. I get it. But come and sing out loud. Listen to the words that you sing. Listen to them carefully. And mean every word that you say. That's the power that praise and worship can infuse into us. It can break us down because God wants to break us down. And he knows praise and worship is what sets the tone and paves the way for the walls to come down. And I pray that we just continue to grow together and learn how to praise and worship. How to grow in that. How to practice that. Remember I said, when the Israelites show up at Jericho, 
the people were already afraid because they heard what God was doing. There was so much power that was coming at them. They were already afraid. Well, listen, I found something I wanted to read to you. And I want you to listen to this. One author writes this. It was said that Mary... It was said that Mary, Queen of Scots, feared John Knox's prayers more than she feared an enemy army. But is society today afraid of what God's people may do? Probably not, and it's mainly because the church hasn't done much to display the power of God to a skeptical world. In fact, the church is so much like the world that the world takes little notice of what we do. We imitate the world's methods. We cater to the world's appetites. We solicit to the world's approval. And we measure what we do according to the world's standards. Is it any wonder why we don't gain the world's respect? I want you too, to flip that gift every week. And when people come in and feel the holiness that comes into our presence, they will awe and tremble at the feet of Christ. I won't need to preach a single word. That's how I encourage you to worship. My goosebumps and my hair are standing straight up like a porcupine. Because you have it. Don't measure worship success, church success by who you see. You just do what you do best. Because I am so proud of you guys. But for you and I, do we have a praise and worship song, a go-to song or two, when we start drifting and going down that bad road or falling away? Do you have those songs? Where you can get on your knees. Or just stand up and say, no, I'm not going there today, enemy. I'm going to praise and worship. I'm going to lift up his holy name. Because today is not the last chapter of my life. Tomorrow is still to come. Pray variously. Number three. Back in Ephesians 6, Paul's going to say, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. So pray in the Spirit. Most of us, when we pray, and it's normal and it's common to do so, we start with certainly the things that are on our mind, the things that just come naturally to us. But I do want to touch on something, and I'm not trying to scare any one of you away. I want this to be an encouragement to all of you to not only learn how to pray, but to take how you pray and go even deeper. You see, I get it, and we all have our five-minute prayer sessions, our ten-minute prayer sessions, our quick, you know, shake a hand and Hail Mary pray, right? I get it. We have those, those times, but we need our dedicated prayer times. And when you do, I've experienced individually and especially corporately when you get to get in the Spirit. And for a wearied soldier of Christ, for those of you who are really fighting the good fight and doing all that you can to live for the Lord and to serve the Lord, which again is just about every one of you, and I commend you on it, it gets exhausting, doesn't it? Some days you're wounded, some days you're sick, some days you're tired. And the last thing in those moments is, oh gosh, okay, let's pray. <laughs> I haven't slept in 12 days. Let's pray. Now, 
Turn with me to Romans chapter 8. And again, the cross references are underneath each point. So you can write them down and study them again on your own. But truly, the source of our strength comes from when we pray. But we have definitely times, moments, days, seasons where ministry can take you to what feels like the cliff of defeat. You're at the edge of wanting to quit or give up. The challenges to your calling bear down on you. They're heavy. Well, when this happens, you have an, a Romans 8 moment ready to happen. So look with me. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, also helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. So what do you have going on here? You have your times, your moments. You're living out your call. You're doing all that you can. And it gets so tough. You get so weak. You don't even know what to pray. And I've had these moments individually and collectively where all of a sudden it's like. It's so hard to explain, but it's like God just drops a power bomb on you. All of a sudden you have this infusion of a supernatural source. Because you started out praying and you were weak. You didn't even know what to say. Maybe you just cried. You ever done that? It's just been so hard, so tough. Maybe you're there today one, for one reason or another. And you're just, God, I don't know what I'm, what's going on. It's so hard. And bam! The Holy Spirit drops intercessions maybe you'll start making sounds and utterances you don't even know what you're saying and that's a wonderful experience praying in the spirit now it doesn't always happen and you can't generate it on your own believe me i wish i could because i'd put it in a bottle and i'd sell it to you for 9.99 no just kidding <laughs> I know, look at me, making money off the gospel. But family, when we get together and we corporately pray, in this year to come, this is what I'm praying, begins to happen and we experience these type moments the intercession of the Holy Spirit. He knows what you need. He doesn't want you to give up. He doesn't want you to quit because that's why it says all things work together for good. Not everything is good, but everything does work together for good. Yeah, give me one second. This thing is driving me crazy. Somebody say amen. All right. That should work. All right, good. Thank you, brother. So, intercession. He knows exactly what we need, when we need it. And God will engineer circumstances to bring you to these places. Because maybe Pastor Jim's been doing it in his own strength.
Maybe we started out right. And then we just, the flesh takes over. But we need to pray like this. And we need to ask the Lord, hey, take me into that spiritual world. It's not spooky. You won't be doing I promise you, it's not that. I've seen videos and it makes me... You don't have spirit seizures. Like, it's very... It's power, but it's also controlled power. So I get it. Some some people have taken this and and they run a, a, a marathon with it. That's okay. You know what? I am going to go to. <laughs> Testing. Ah, there we go. So, family, listen. Next Sunday is prayer and communion night. Let's let the Lord blow this place down. John and Lauren are going to have some powerful worship in store once again. Talina, our prayer warrior, is going to lead us in. Jenna prays some pretty serious prayers too, so we're going to get her in on the mix too. We have just such a gifted, sweet, awesome family. And we all need prayer. We all need this power because we all want to be able to share the gospel. We all want to be able to live our lives for the gospel and do all that we can for the gospel. But we're going to need this kind of prayer, this kind of power. So if you've lost focus, if you've lost hope, if you've been discouraged, dismayed, When you go home today, man, please, family, ask the Lord, hey, take me into the spirit when I pray. And whether it happens that time, next time, the 10th time in, just let him have his way. Let him empower you with such an intense power, because trust me, I can't wait for one of you to walk through the door one day and you're like, Jim, it happened. I prayed and I was so powerful. I felt like the emperor, unlimited power. Number four. Pray until he answers. Turn with me to Luke chapter 18. In Luke chapter 18, starting in verse 1, then he spoke a parable to them and that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Take note of that. I love that. This is why Jesus is going to tell this whole parable, because he wants you to be continuously praying until God answers. Sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says no. Sometimes he says, just wait. It's coming. But we can lose heart while we're waiting. We can lose heart sometimes when God says no. Oh, man, Lord, I really wanted to do that. No, okay. You want me to do this instead. But don't lose heart while you're waiting. Many of you know some of my loved ones. I've been praying for 20 years, and they're still not saved. And it's, it's easy to lose heart. I'm the pastor, and I'll tell you that straight up. I need your faith. I need the power of your prayers because sometimes I feel like mine just have no power anymore. Right? Because 
I've been trying. I've been sharing. I've been praying, Lord, and they seem to get harder by the day. Like, come on. But look what he says. There was a certain, there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying, God, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest her by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said and shall God not avenge his own elect that's us who cry out day and night to him though he bears long with them pray until he gives you an answer you've heard me say it before prayers don't go unanswered they go unprayed we just stop praying for it because we may just say, well, I give up. There's no hope. It's not going to happen. God's clearly said no. He could be waiting to say, hey, you know what? In the fourth year of R&R is when the revival's going to kick in. Okay, well, let's keep praying for it then. One soul at a time. One person at a time. Let's get in community and just love on all of us right now, when the revival comes, everyone's on the payday list because you're all going to be on the staff. Do we have that kind of prayer life that we, listen, and I know it sounds like we're bugging God. God, I know I've asked you for this like 10,000 times. He loves to hear from you. He's your father. He's not annoyed that you're coming to him. You know how many times I've gone to him in the last 12 days about my stomach? I'm like, Lord, please. It's okay to keep asking because remember what Jesus says? Ask, seek, and find. And the tenses are, continuously ask continuously seek continuously you will find it's not just ask one and done it's not like I used to be when I go to my mom hey mom can I get a cookie no oh fine <laughs> John knows my obsession with cookies that's why he's laughing I knew if I asked a second time I'd be grounded that's why I couldn't ask a second time no meant no. But with God, it's sweet. We get the opportunity to come to him on a regular, regular, consistent basis. Lord, are you going to please do this now? Do this now. Help me now. Give me this now or strengthen me now or whatever the case may be. Last one as we get ready to close. Pray for others. In the war that we are in, and everyone who has a high calling, which everyone is in this room and those that are listening, you are definitely called to be his disciples and make disciples. Because isn't that what Jesus said to go and do? Go and make disciples. So we need to pray for one another. Because your place of work, I can pray for you there that you can reach the people at your work. Hey, when you say you're going to the mall today or the aquarium today or you're going here today or there today, guess what I can do? I can pray for you that you might be able to have a chance to witness to someone there. Right? So the constant need, and that's just one of a gazillion reasons to pray for one another. But remember when Jesus taught us to pray? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He's, he, he didn't, it's our Father. It's not my father. It's our father. Because we should go to him together. Petition together. Ask together. Because families do that, right? You spend time together. You want to grow together. Well, it's no different in the church family. I want to see you all grow. Hopefully you want to see me grow. So we need to go to God constantly and as much as we can together because we fight better when we fight together. Families fight, right? 
<laughs> but families love hard too. But prayer will keep everything also, let's just say, it'll keep peace and we'll be cool with one another, right? So if you have beef with somebody in the church, prayer will make that all right. Hey, man, I'm praying for you. Well, you can't say that if you're really angry with someone. It's hard to do. And Paul says, pray for me. Jesus in the garden. Hey, boys, pray for me, right? If those two needed to be prayed for, then we all need to be prayed for. So at the bottom of this, we need to pray maybe and start. I need to start writing out some prayer request cards. Hey, maybe someone in here can generate a prayer list sheet that we can be constantly praying over for. Because I want to read you one last thing. It's from a book called Desiring God. Anyone ever read that book before? It's a really, really good book. I encourage you to read it. But I want to read an excerpt from it. And again, this is John Piper's words. Unless I'm badly mistaken, one of the main reasons so many of God's children do not have a significant life of prayer is not so much that we don't want to, but we don't plan to. If you want to take a four-week vacation, you don't get up one summer morning and say, hey, let's go today. You won't have anything ready. You won't know where to go. Nothing's been planned. But that is how many of us treat prayer. We get up day after day and realize that significant times of prayer should be part of our life, but nothing's ever ready. We don't know where to go. Nothing's been planned. No time, no place, no procedure. And all we know that the opposite of planning is not a wonderful flow of deep, spontaneous experiences in prayer. The opposite of planning is the rut. If you don't plan a vacation, you will probably stay home and watch TV. The natural unplanned flow of spiritual life sinks to the lowest ebb of vitality. There is a race to be run and a fight to be fought. And if you want renewal, renewal in your life of prayer, you must plan to see it. Everyone's got a cell phone? You know what you can do? Plug in prayer time. This is what I'm going to dedicate and have your prayer list ready to go. You can put me at the bottom, but fit me in somewhere. Because <laughs> I know I need a boatload of prayer. I know we all need a boatload of prayer. We watched this movie how many times? Finding Nemo. Remember? Bruce, the big shark. Right? They're having their little fish friend party. Right? Hello. Name's Bruce. Uh, oh, my gosh. Wow, that was scary. Fish all friends, not food, right? And then when it's time for Marlon to come up, hey, what's your problem? I don't have anything. I don't have any problems. Uh, denial. Come on, man. We're not, we can't be in denial. We all have needs to be prayed over. So don't be ashamed. If you want to be and keep it anonymous, then when you pray together, which is what we're going to do now, John and Lauren, come on up. They're going to sing us one last song. I want you to pray for the person to your left or to your right or find someone in the church. It can be families hugged up together. It can be brothers to brothers, sisters to sisters, but you're going to close out together by praying over one another. And this is something we're probably going to implement on a regular basis. Because I get it. Sometimes it's embarrassing to walk up here and be singled out for prayer. So if we do it this way, it'll be hopefully a little more comfortable for you. And again, you can just say, pray for my walk with Christ. 
pray for my family, pray for my sick ones, my unsaved ones. I mean, you can just keep it simple. It doesn't have to be deep-rooted or super personal. 